Welcome to Ultimate DIY, where you learn to be your own handyman. And today we're going to complete last week's episode where we're going to go in and install the cartridge into the Delta multi choice valve. Last week you saw me go ahead and install all of the plumbing. I did PEX to copper conversions, ran that up, and it was ProPEX, uh, Upanor, ran those up, connected everything, the valve is ready to go. And on this episode, you're going to see how I actually put the valve, or not the valve, but the cartridge into the valve. And what we do, like how we set the, the water temperature, how we know which side is hot, which side is cold, because there is a certain way that that valve needs to go in. And then we're going to put on the trim kit. I'll go ahead and let you see a little bit of the uh, finish out repairing the drywall. I'm going to make a separate video of that to put in the drywall category on our playlist but you'll get to see it and I'll actually leave it in the little cards at the top where you can link to it to see the entire video of that part if you're real interested in that. But this video is mainly going to be about the plumbing part of it and how you get that valve in and how you get the trim uh, kit on and how it works. So let's get to the customer site and let's get to it. <music> guys we are going to talk about the cartridge real quick this cartridge first of all you're going to have your instruction manual and it will tell you how to set temperature i'm going to show you how to do that real quick it's pretty simple but the first thing you need to know is there's an h on the side of the valve that h needs to go to the side where your hot water line is coming in this one and if you don't know how to figure that out or you messed up whatever get your plug leave your plug in but open up your shower valve part of it and uh, just let the water run for a few minutes you'll be able to feel your pipe so that you can tell which is the hot and which is the cold but these little notches have to slide in and it'll feel a little bit tight you can actually wet the o-ring a little bit and you've got two of them here too but this is the main one that'll hold it but you have to slide it in with the h now you can adjust this before you put it in or you can adjust it after and what it is it has these little dials here and Hank what you do is you have to pull backwards which actually it's already pulled because I was messing with a little if you it'll turn clockwise or counterclockwise if you go clockwise it's going to make the temperature much cooler if you want the hottest water you need to go counterclockwise so you pull back and go all the way until it's either all the way stopped or where you're going to want it. The reason people do that is because they have small children in the house, elderly, they don't want to be scalded. Some people will change this twice a season, once when winter hits, once when summer hits, because you'll be able to pull off your little scushion plate and your trim plate, and you can adjust this real quick. It's pretty simple. But if you ever have a problem, that's what makes the Delta Multi valve so cool is if you have a water problem starts leaking or you know not functioning correctly you can buy this piece slide it back in or pull it out slide it back in in a few minutes and you're up and running again very cool so now i'm going to go ahead and install it and show you how we do that okay so i have my test plate on right now and i've got it pretty much where i'm going to want it it's pretty straight about as straight as i'm going to get it now this is a bigger hole than normal Remember, we bought a bigger discussion plate to go over that to help cover it. This is your plug. This, this is going to slide inside of here. This is where if you're testing and you don't know which, the wall, uh, where, which one's hot, which I know my hot is on my left, and that's the way it usually is, hot, left, cold, right. But don't always take that for granted. Sometimes it'll be different. This is where you can leave this plug, turn on your water for a minute, pull out the plug if you're using a plug for your shower, which you should be because you need to test this before you ever close up a wall or put tile on and make sure that you don't have any leaks. So what you will do is leave this plug in, turn on your water, let the shower run, and then go fill your pipes so that you know which one of those pipes is hot and which is cold. So you make sure, because remember, the H right here needs to go this way. Cold is going to be this way. Well, actually, I've got it backwards. It's like this. So hot. It's going that way and it's going to slide in. So let me show you how it works. My water is already off. You remove the cap. 
and remove the little test plug right like so. And now what I'm going to do is take my age. And first, let me pull this and make sure I'm all the way up hot. There we go. All right, got my H here. Push that back in so it locks in place. And you want to gently put it in with the H on that side. And you're going to see these two little notches on the side. You'll know you're in when those it's up flush like that. A lot of people stop early. Now, this is another problem I see a lot of newbies uh, have a problem with. They go turn on the water. They think this is in. They want to test it and make sure they're okay. That's fantastic, except you've got to put the locking nut back on. If you don't, this is going to shoot across the room. I know a particular person here recently who did that by accident and shot it across the room and couldn't call me, couldn't figure out what to do. Just make sure that's on there and then it's tight. Now, that's pretty simple. It's on. So next, we're going to put on the plate. Okay, so now we're going to put the little guard on first. I don't know actually what they call this piece, but it goes on. And if you just put it on like this, it's going to wobble and make noise. They give you an O-ring to put on. And you generally have to work it over. And the reason you put this O-ring on is it keeps this wobble from happening. So I usually do like so. Work it up there. See, now it actually stiffens that up. So now at this point, you've got that on. Now it's time to put your actual plate on, the scourging plate. I guess is, I'm saying that correctly. So you're going to, you have two holes which are going to line up with your delta, and this has its own little seal around it. Now I am going to put some silicone around it, especially since this is such a big opening. Even though those will pull pretty tight and seal it, I still always do a little silicone. And one thing they'll give you a hint on is when you put the handle on, there's a little bitty Allen head that goes inside of that. I pre-start my Allen head and get it just where it's about to engage, not fall, you know, and not engage so it'll go on, then tighten it. But my point is, is that little Allen head screw, it's teeny tiny. It can fall off and it can go down your drain. And believe me, you ask me how I know, it, it's happened to me. So be sure you put a towel over your shower uh, drain. So then you'll take these screws and you're going to try to start them. Now I'm using a drill. I wouldn't use an impact here because the impact can strip out your screw. Plus you don't want to mar these. So I get them started and I'll finish up generally with a screwdriver. Let me see if I can see exactly where that's gonna be. Right there, like so. And that should be pretty close. If you use the impact, though, it's got too much pound with that impact, and it can actually strip things out. This just saves you time. So you're not hand screwing all of this. Not quite. Let me take a look from the other side of what's happening. The second one is always the one that can be painful because you got to adjust it just a little. Somewhere right in there. I think that's it. Let's see if that'll take. There we go. And it's pulling that pretty snug all the way around. There we go. All right, so now we get that. Then it's just a matter of placing the handle. So, I figure where I actually want that handle. All the way on, all the way on. That's pretty good right there. like that. And let's see my Allen head. They do give you a small Allen head. 
which makes it nice. Now you don't want to use the short end, you'll just be banging this. You can actually then make it long enough to go past the handle. So you'll start like so. And I already had it almost to the point of engaging. So it shouldn't take too long. Then once it's snug, I'll tighten with the short part of it. If I can get it started here. There we go. You want this getting tight so it's not falling off on you or a customer. Just like so. And now we are engaged. Now that would be off. That would be on. Delta's at the top. And we are good to go. And I do have a slight bend here, and that has a lot to do with the back wall and trying to make this actually work. And it could even be the tile. I'd have to put something across it to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's that back wall and trying to make it where that the two before that I mounted to was straight. Also, the delta could have been over just a hair. There we go. That's a little better. Okay, guys. So now the valve itself is installed. So what you got to do is you got to be very careful. And mark where you're going to put your screws. You know, on the sides here, you want to make ding sure that you don't put anything in the center. And you probably want to let your customer know that you have a pipe running right through the center. If they try to hang a picture, they're going to probably put um, something directly into that. So what I'm going to do, there's two ways I can do this. I can use my stud finder, find my stud, cut it there in a straight line, and leave this little piece of sheetrock. But that's going to give me a whole other line I'm going to have to tape and bed. So if I take this out all the way to the edge, pull the whole thing out, which is what I was originally going to do anyway, it will make this much simpler to tape and bed. I'll have a line at the top and a line at the bottom, and of course my corners, which are pretty simple anyway. So now by doing that, I will have a little bit of extra I've got to do here, but it'll look better than right in the center looking at your toilet. So we're going to try to pull these. to get it ready to put a piece of sheetrock in here. So the first thing I'll do is I make a square. I've got a little screw in here. So just make myself a square which represents my wall. And I'm going to do an R for right, L for left, T for top, B for bottom. That way I get it exactly right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark here where my pipe is on both sides so that I know not to put a screw. And then I make a mark for my stud, and I like to make both sides, so I hit it no matter what. Here, I'm going to make a mark here, a big square, because I know I can go all the way up. Go ahead and do it here. That's going to be covered with paint and mud. Now, this side is very thin, so it's very important here to be able to mark it. So I know it has to be thin. And I can also put a couple of screws here if I want this way. And what I'll do is I measure, I know from the very wall, I can go out, I'm going to say eight inches will be safe. And I'll make an eight here. That way I know I can put some screws there. And then I've got it here and here. Right there. And I'm going to go here, pretty much to here. So I know I've got this, I've got this one that one there, 
avoiding this. Nothing can hit these. I'm going to be on the right side, and I'm going to be on the inside of these, even though that's way inside. So that's what I do there. Now I do my measurements. Now I will do a top to bottom on each side. So on my right side, I've got roughly 23 and 3 quarter. So 23 and 3 quarter. Make my arrows like so. I do the same thing. I'm trying not to block the camera. Let's see if I can do it from down here. And then this one is going to be 23, you're almost three quarter. So we're about 23 and a half here. We could probably do this one at 23 and a half and be fine. So we're going to do 23 and a half, 23 and a half. Now I'm going to measure the bottom. Now this should be pretty much uniform. So we have got uh, about. Now one trick you can do here is we'll say this is 20 inches. We'll measure back from that to the 20. So we have 22 uh, and I hate when I put that arrow right there. But that's going to be a little bit below the half. So we're going to say 3 eighths. 3 eighths. So bottom, 23, 3, 8. Let's see if our top is the same. Hopefully it is. We're very close. Let's see. My 20 is right down there. Yep, exactly the same. Okay, guys, back in the garage to cut this real quick. So all you're going to do is take your piece of paper, though, and lay it exactly like you have it. The first cut I want to make, let's see, this is left, right, bottom, and top. Let me see how far. Yeah. You can use this to measure. I never trust them. I like to pull my own. So we're going to go over to 23 and 3 eighths. I'm going to do that on both. Actually, not 23, it's 32 and 3 eighths. That would be a bad mistake. 32 and 3 eighths. One, two, and three. I'm going to do that a couple of the ways here just in case your my T squared is at a level a little. The 32 and one, two, and three. Double check that again. One, two, three. Yeah, that's perfect. You want to be careful not to lean on your panel too much because it will, it can snap it. 32 and 38. Right there. Now you just take your T square. So I'm going to make this cut first and then I'm going to make my two side cuts. So I'm going to you take your T-square, put it on where it slides across the bottom, and line up your marks. Now all your marks, this square is in good shape. You can see all every mark is in the right spot. I don't know if you can see it in the film. One here, one here, and one up there. So lean gently, just like so. And instead of leaning across, putting weight on my panel, my sheetrock, I'm going to come over and do it here. You don't have to cut deep, you just really have to cut the paper. I'll use my square as a guide sometimes to make a really straight line. All right, now I'm going to do the same over here. Scored it. This is how simple it snaps. You just raise it up, just like so. Bring it around. I use my knee, push against it just slightly. And now you have it. And then I cut the paper on this side. All right.
Okay, sorry guys, I'm sweating to death out here. So, we've got our 32 and 3 eighths this way, top, bottom. Now we need to mark our right side and our left side. They're both going to be the same. We're looking at 23 and a half. So we are going to go up to 23 and one half. Like so. 23, one half. I go ahead and mark a middle one, especially since one side's cut. I'll probably pull my square from that side. 23 and a half. Always double check. All right. That looks pretty good right there. Mark it. And let's cut it. Watch your fingers. Just like so. Just like that. And there we go. Alright. Pretty close. We have a little bit of an edge. Right here and here. So we'll clean that up with the multi tool real quick. how you'll actually tell. You're going to take your cutting knife and you're going to slide it over. All in. All in. All in. Everything is in. If you did have one that makes a dinging sound, you'll take your screwdriver and you'll slowly turn it in. This screwdriver is a little small for those. You need a different bit. This one's a little warm. But I did bring this for a reason. You see these where I made the mistake and the metal bar was going through here? You want to fix this. You don't want to leave that like that because it's going to show through your mud. So if you'll take your screwdriver, push it in like so, it'll level it out. And then when you put the mud over it, it'll hide it. So that's a very important step. So now we're going to use the mesh. Now, remember I said a mesh, or I've said it in the past, don't know if I've said it on this video, but in the past, I've told you, you do not use mesh if it's new construction and you're putting everything up and you're using regular taping mud. We are going to use hot mud, so we're going to use repair tape here. 
was it's where it's going to set up real quickly. I don't really have to pre mud. I can push everything into here really well without having to do that. So this has a sticky side. You take and you're going to put it against it here, and, I'll, and you're going to get it right where it needs to go. Use your taping knife, hold it in place, and then side tear. Okay, now that is ready to go in. Now, hot mud, if you're not familiar and you haven't watched the other tapes, is mud that sets up really quick, usually anywhere from five minutes to about an hour and a half. Regular mud takes about 24 hours to set up. So, the hot mud is stronger, sets up quicker, doesn't shrink, and it's made to work with the mesh type tape. So, if I'm using regular taping mud, I'm going to have to use regular tape. And the nice thing about hot mud is you can go through two or three levels a day. You could probably do a complete repair job one day versus taking three or four days. Because each level that you do is going to take you probably about um, uh, each level is usually a day with regular mud. Now this I'd be interested in. That's kind of what I thought was going to happen. Just like so. So you get that in the corner really good. Hold it. This is our hot mud all mixed up. Want it mixed like a peanut butter. Just like so. Just don't want any clumps in it. This is 90 minute mud. Now normally, I showed in a couple other videos, you would load it up clean off your edges and you would slide sideways. That works great on tape. It doesn't work too much on repair mesh. I mean, it can, but it's a little painful. So generally I will just get the mud on there and then I go back and feather my edges. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull through the center first flat, then you're going to go back and you're going to pull, putting more of your pressure to the bottom, lift the top and slide across, not putting much in the middle. Then you're going to do the opposite, put pressure here, lift this side, go across it. What you're doing is feathering your edges that way. So I'm going to go first through the center just to try and there we go that. Now I'm going to feather. I'm going to feather from the top first. You can't really see that in yours. And now I'm going to feather the bottom. So I'm going to push down harder at the bottom. Not much in the top. Just like that. <laughs> sand most of this. I may do a little bit of the sander on the sides of the wall here. I 
but I wet sand a lot to not make as much mess, but I'll have to a little bit on this to try to get some of this to where it blends because you've got texture still on those sides. And then we put our next coat. So each coat will start fanning it out a little bigger. Now, obviously I can't fan too much here or up there because the shelf or that. So I'm just basically going to end up feathering right into that area and then try to make these sides look decent. And then here, these will fan out just a little, but not a whole lot. So we put a bunch of the mud in and a bunch of water. We're mixing. We want it really watery. This is a small patch. So I don't need a whole lot. That looks pretty good right there. Got the hopper hooked up. Got the pressure about as high as it'll go. And I have a very watery mix to try to match this little bitty light texture. So we're going to blow it on here and let it dry. Come back and do a light sand.